Hello bookworms! Today I'm gonna to be doing my next news and stuff video. This is gonna be kind of like our summer catch-up edition because I didn't post one over the summer and <laughs> it's been like three months and don't worry I'm not gonna go through like every bit of news since the last time. I'm gonna be highlighting the things that I'm most excited about but fair warning there are a lot of things in here so it's going to be a little bit longer than my typical news videos so I'm sorry about that but there are a lot of cover reveals so in the beginning I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about some of the more like in-depth new stuff and then I'm gonna kind of go through like a cover reveal lightning round of sorts so that way I can get them out there and tell you about all the things that I want to talk about. Okay I guess we should just get on into it. So the first bit of news that I am so pumped for is that we finally got a little bit of word on what's been going on with the Raven Cycle pilot and it turns out that the pilot episode which is called It's Starting It's Starting is actually written by Maggie Steve better herself which could not be more exciting because if there's one person who's going to do the Raven Cycle correctly, it is the author. So I'm really looking forward to like finding out anything else that we possibly can when we do. But we got this little tidbit of information because Maggie posted a photo of the cover of the script on Twitter and that's all that we know so far. Like there's really no other information except that it is, I think she had edits so it's already been written. It's just going through the editing process. Don't know when they're gonna start filming, but man, am I living for for that day. Next is a quick one that I'm sure everyone has already heard of at this point, but we got a cover reveal for Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. This is the the, I almost said third. <laughs> this is like the seventh and final book in the Throne of Glass series and it is yellow which is a really unexpected color but I actually really like the cover. I am super excited to get my hands on this and finish out this series and like just see the fate of all of these characters that I've grown to love over so many years. But yeah I think we've all seen this so let's move on. Next while we're talking about Sarah J Maas there's also going to be a collector's edition that's being released for the Throne of Glass series. It's coming out on November 6th so we don't have to wait too long which is pretty nice. It's really really beautiful. The cover is like a deep royal purple. There's one cover for the US and then there's one cover for the UK and India and it looks like Australia and New Zealand are actually getting their choice of both copies which is very nice to have options. I can honestly say that this is probably one of the only times ever that I actually like the USA cover better than the UK cover. I think it's because it has the pretty slipcase and I also really like the deer head that's on it. I think it's really beautiful. I've obviously pre-ordered this but it's coming out in November so you still have time to pre-order yours as well. Next we got the Barnes & Noble exclusive cover reveal for The Wicked King by Holly Black. As you know they did a black version of The Cruel Prince and they're going to be following suit and there's that cover edition of The Wicked King and I think it's really pretty. I actually like the original cover better. I also liked the white cover of Cruel Prince better too but I still think that it's pretty and I'm obviously gonna get it because the series is my life. We are also getting a short story called The Lost Sisters by Holly Black which is set within the Cruel Prince universe. It's a 50 page e-novella that's being released on October 2nd so it could be be out today. I think this video is going up Tuesday actually. So that it's out now. Go get it. <laughs> there was actually a little vote online by the novel. There were two covers that they were between. You were able to vote for the one that you liked. The one that I voted for won, which I was really excited about. But the e-novella is about Taryn and her story. So that's going to be a really interesting piece of the puzzle to be added because obviously we've only gotten Jude's perspective thus far and I cannot wait. I'm so excited. There's a good chance that I'm reading it right now <laughs> while you watch this video and I'm also really hoping this means that Holly will write some more short stories set within this world and then maybe once the whole trilogy is published we'll get like a hardcover bound version of the e-novellas. That would be awesome. We also got a cover reveal for The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the first book in the Eldest Curses trilogy and it is one that I am so highly anticipating because we're finally going to get Magnus and Alex story like told from their perspective because obviously we do know like a bunch of their story but this one sounds like it's going to be really interesting. It starts off in Paris and there's also going to be a storyline involving a demon worshipping cult that Magnus accidentally started which is called The Crimson Hand and this book is going to be coming out April 2nd 2019 so there's a little bit of a wait but we do have Queen of Air and Darkness coming very soon so yes excited. And then while we're talking about collector's editions there's been so many collector's editions lately and I'm here for it. We are also getting a special collector's edition of A Gathering of Shadows by Victoria Schwab. This is another one where the cover is being released in 
black instead of the white from like the normal cover. There has not yet been any word as to whether Barnes & Noble will also be doing an exclusive cover because last time they did a silver version, which is why I have three copies of Darker Shade of Magic, but I'm really hoping that they'll do like a red version or something for, for one of the other Londons. I think that could be a really cool, a cool thing to do. The collector's edition is going to be coming out in March of 2019. And then yet another collector's edition. We have a collector's edition of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo and holy cow is this gorgeous. This is only coming out in the UK. I don't know why they're not doing it in the US, but you can order a copy from Book Depository, which is where I pre-ordered mine from. I think this copy is like stunning. It is a beautiful black cover. It has red sprayed pages. I just love colored pages. That's like one of my favorite things. So I immediately was like, yes. It also has six full color character portraits within it. And it's coming out very soon on October 8th. So we won't be waiting too much longer. And then I'm expecting that they will do one for Crooked Kingdom, which is my favorite book in that series. And of all the ones that Lee has written, actually. Then Lee Bardugo is also putting out another book, but it is a little bit unconventional. It is called The Severed Moon, and even though it's being called like part of the Grisha universe, it's not a traditional novel. It's actually like a journal, and it's full of writing prompts and different quotations from Lee Bardugo for you to like reflect and have a magical life. And this is coming out in January of 2019. The cover is really pretty. Then we have a bit of good news for Susan Dennard. So her Witchland series was just picked up by Jim Henson Company and it's going to be made into a live action television series. Lisa Henson is actually going to be the executive producer on the project and Susan is going to be the co-executive producer. So once again, I really like when authors are involved in the adaptations because I feel like their voice is very important since they're the one that created this thing. And Jim Henson Company is like an awesome company and they're going to be making all of the creatures that will be seen within the series in their creature shop, which I think is really cool because there are very interesting animals within the book if you've read it. And then speaking of the Witchlands, we also got the cover reveal for Blood Witch, which is the fourth book. Well, which is technically the third book in the Witchland series, but there is that Sight Witch book, which is like book, it's a 0.5 book, but it's a prequel. So it's technically like the fourth book that will be released. Sadly, I don't love it. I was really expecting more from it. Adewan is my favorite character within the series, so I am like still really looking forward to reading it when it comes out. It's not coming out until January, but I think that it kind of looks like a Brandon Sanderson cover to me. Like it kind of looks like a basic fantasy book, which kills me because I really had just like very high hopes for this cover. I also think that part of it is every book in the series so far has white topography and then this one has red topography and it just doesn't like flow as well as I was expecting it to. I don't hate it by any means, but I just wasn't like blown away by it, but I'm still looking forward to reading it. Then I have good news for anybody who loves Caraval and Legendary because Stephanie Garber announced on Twitter that the third book in the series finale, the release date actually got pushed up by three weeks. So instead of coming out at the end of May in 2019, it's going to be coming out on May 7th of 2019. So the wait has gotten a little bit shorter. <laughs> Next, it was announced that there is a live action Avatar The Last Airbender series that is going to be coming to Netflix. Once again, the original creators are going to be involved. So that is something that I just have like super high hopes for. I love the Avatar series like with my entire being. It is so amazing and anyone who hasn't watched the animated series yet, I would like highly recommend that you do so because it's just phenomenal. Like if you like fantasy at all, this is a series that you will love. And the current live action movie is terrible, so do not watch that. But I'm really looking forward to this adaptation. And we got one piece of concept art so far, and Appa and Aang just look incredible. And like the landscape and the whole like skyscape. Oh man, I am over the moon. <laughs> Next, Claire Legrand announced the title and then we also got a cover reveal for the second book in the Imperium trilogy. The first book is Furyborn. The second book is Kingsbane and this cover is in incredible. I loved the first cover so much and I was like wow like they really just outdid themselves with this cover and then I saw the second one and I was like what? How is this even possible? This is 
it's amazing. Like, it's so beautiful. I still have to read Furyborn, but I, like, this Kingsbane cover is really pushing me to do so <laughs> very soon. I'm also wondering if the third cover will be yellow, because we know that there are blood, there's a blood queen and there's a sun queen. So I'm wondering if that's the direction we'll go in, but time will tell. Seanan McGuire, who's the author of the Wayward Children series, is coming out with a new standalone fantasy novel called Middle Game. It features amoral alchemy, shadowy organizations, and impossible cities, and this is coming out on May 7th of 2019, and I have to say that I really love the cover. I think it's super cool. It actually kind of reminds me of the movie House of Wax, which is not good, but I like the uh, aesthetic of it. Next, Alexandra Christo, who is the author author of To Kill a Kingdom has announced her second book, which is called Into the Crooked Place. This is a new duology that is taking place in a world where black magic is thriving and it follows, I want to say, four thieves, and they are all about to embark on a quest to take down their current, like, crime lord. The premise sounds really intriguing to me and this is going to be a duology so there's going to be a total of two books and the first one is scheduled to release in October of 2019 so we still have another year before this comes out. Next we also found out the title of Margaret Rogerson's next book. Margaret wrote An Enchantment of Ravens which has one of the prettiest book covers ever, pretty much. <laughs> Her next book is called Sorcery of Thorns, and it's going to be completely unrelated to An Enchantment of Ravens, and it's also going to be much longer, which I personally am really excited about because I didn't really like An Enchantment of Ravens very much, even though I wanted more than anything to love it. Like, I still am sad that I didn't love it, and I still think about, like, maybe I should reread it. Maybe it was the wrong time. Maybe it was me. Like, <laughs> I just want to love it. Part of the reason that I didn't love it is because it was so short, and I really wanted more from it, but the second book of hers is going to be much longer, so I have really high hopes that this one will be something that I end up enjoying much more. All that we know about it so far is that there's a supernatural being who has a false name and a secret true name, and we will find out the true name at some point in the book likely at the end of the book. And this one is coming May 14th, 2019. Next, there is a company called Department 56, and they are releasing a Harry Potter Christmas village, which is so pretty. They're like, this village is kind of perfect for year round, if you ask me. I don't think that it's something that you only need for Christmas. I particularly love Hagrid's hut. I think that just looks absolutely gorgeous. The pieces are kind of pricey because it is like a Christmas village type thing. They're not currently released, but they are up for pre-order on their website if you are interested in picking any up. Jelly Belly is also releasing some new Harry Potter candy. So the thing that I'm most excited about is they're releasing chocolate wands, but they're specific wands from characters within the series. So we're getting Dumbledore's wand, Harry's wand, Hermione's wand, and Ron's wand. Dumbledore's looks the best just because there's so much like detail in it. There's also going to be a four pack of crispy chocolate Hogwarts crests and they're going to come with stickers and then there's also going to be little mystery packs of crispy chocolate that have like magical creatures so you can either get like Fluffy or Fang or Aragog or Crookshanks or Hedwig or a Thestral and they're also going to come with a card but you won't know which one you have gotten until you open it. So it'll be a new fun thing to collect. Then we got the cover reveal for the new Stranger Things novel called Suspicious Minds. This is coming in spring of 2019 and it's being written by Gwenda Bond who wrote Lois Lane Fallout if you're familiar with that series of books. But this book is going to be a prequel novel to the Stranger Things television series and it's going to be following Eleven's mom and explore kind of what she went through in that program that we still don't know too much about. And there's also going to be a an official like behind the scenes companion book that has the most awesome cover ever which just like look at that it's amazing. I can't wait to get both of these books and all of the subsequent Stranger Things books that they publish after these. The first one is coming in spring of 2019. Then Netflix bought the rights to the film adaptation of Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. We still don't have a release date for it. Jennifer Aniston is still attached to the project. She's still playing one of the lead characters and she's still an executive producer on the show. And we also found out that Dolly Parton is actually writing new music specifically for the film which is really cool, and I would imagine that Netflix decided to pick this up after the success with To All the Boys I've Loved Before, which 
so good. So good. All right, and now we're going to do our cover reveal lightning round because we got a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> so the first reveal that came out is for Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. Karen's the author of One of Us is Lying, and this cover definitely is the same kind of aesthetic, which I really like when they kind of keep books in the same theme, which I think is pretty nice. So this one sounds like it's going to be interesting, and it's coming out on January 8th. Next is a cover that I am in love with, and it is Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett. Jen is the author of Alex Approximately and Starry Eyes, and she writes very cute contemporary stories, but this one, The Promise of It, speaks to me like even more so than either of the other books because it takes place in a Seattle hotel and there's like rumors that this reclusive author lives there and it follows two people who are working at the hotel and it just sounds like it's gonna be adorable and I'm obsessed with the cover like it's so beautiful. And this one's coming April 16th. Next is another amazing cover and it is When the Sky Fell on Splendor by Emily Henry who is the author of The Love That Split the World and A Million Junes. This is just such a cool like sci-fi aliens like 80s 90s aliens-esque cover and it also kind of reminds me of Attack the Block if you've seen that film. This one's coming out March 12th. Then we got the cover for Arushaw and the Song of Death. This again is one that matches very well with the first cover within the series. I still haven't read that first book. I really need to do so. And the second one is coming in April of 2019. Then we got the final cover for The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I have the ARC exclusive cover from Book Expo for this one. It's extremely similar, but it's really pretty and this book is enormous. Like they've posted photos of the hardcover online. It is huge. I don't even know where I will put it because I'm expecting that I'm gonna love it. And this one's coming out on February 26th. Then we got a cover for Killing November by Adriana Mather, who is the author of How to Hang a Witch and Haunting the Deep. This one's coming March 26th of 2019 and it sounds like it's gonna be really cool because it takes place in like this upstate school that's kind of secluded and then November is a new girl that is going there. There's a murder that takes place and she quickly becomes one of the top suspects so she kind of has to solve this before she is completely like implicated as the killer in this crime that she did not commit. We also got the cover for Superman Dawnbreaker by Matt De La Pena. This is a pretty good cover. I think it also stays in line with the rest of the DC Icon series. I myself don't really care very much for Superman so I'm not positive if I am going to read this one or not. I think it depends on what other people think of it. I I've always found Superman to be kind of on the boring side. He's just not my favorite superhero. But this one comes out February 5th. Then we got the cover reveal for The Everlasting Rose, which is the second book in the Bell series by Danielle Clayton. Again, stays in line with the first book, so that is good. The one thing that I do have to say in my gripe with these is that they're like kind of out of focus, which bothers me. Like I wish, I think that they're beautiful. Like I think the model looks gorgeous and it really like fits with the series, but her face is just like slightly out of focus on the covers and I don't get why that is. <laughs> and this one's coming March 5th. Then we got the cover for Sherwood by Megan Spooner. This is a Robin Hood retelling. I believe it's a female Robin Hood too, which is pretty cool. Again, I really like how this stays in line with her other cover for Hunted, which was a Beating the Beast retelling. I think that she did an amazing job retelling that, so I'm definitely looking forward to reading Sherwood once it comes out. And this one's going to be hitting shelves on March 19th. Then we have a cover for Fame, Fate, and the First Kiss by Casey West. Again, this is very in line with Casey West's other cover covers. We've got the models with no heads just showing us their bodies and these two are like leaning against a car. I particularly like the outfits on this cover so I'm very very much looking forward to it. I love Casey's books. I think they're just so like fluffy and they just make me happy and they're so enjoyable. This one's coming out February 5th. Then we have the cover for The Blood Spell by CJ Redwine which is the fourth book in the Ravenspire series. This is a series that I only read the first book of. I didn't continue with it. I really love this fourth cover. I think it's one of the best ones within the series so far and it's clearly got to be a Cinderella inspired retelling because each one follows like a different fairy tale. So we'll see if I end up picking these up but this one's coming out February 12th of 2019. Then we have the cover for The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. This is the second book in the Truly Devious trilogy. The first book was so entertaining and the cliffhanger at the end killed me so I've been dying for The Vanishing Stare but I actually like this cover better than I liked the first 
first one. I think the red is really pretty and I think that it has like a more intricate design going on on the cover and I'm really looking forward to reading this one when it comes out on January 22nd. Then we got the cover of The Afterward by E.K. Johnston. This book has a really cool premise. It's like it's basically what happens after the giant epic fantasy quest. So it's about these characters like dealing with the aftermath and finding their way back to one another once all of the dramatic events have passed. So it sounds like it's gonna be pretty cool. I do really like the cover. I believe this is a standalone fantasy with two female main characters and it comes out on February 19th. Then we have the cover of Circle of Shadows by Evelyn Sykes. She is the author of The Crowns Game, which I have not read yet. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I've been talking for a long time, but I really want to do so and I'm in love with this cover. I think it is absolutely beautiful and I know that they're going to have arcs of it at New York Comic Con, so I'm definitely going to be trying to pick up a copy then. And that one comes out on January 22nd. Then we got the cover of Evermore by Sarah Holland, which is the second book after Everless. I actually like the second cover again more than I liked the first cover and I really did like the first cover a lot. This is a fantasy trilogy and it has a really interesting premise. I still have to read the first one but I'm planning on doing so before the end of the year. It's like one that I'll just have on my list that I need to get to already. <laughs> the second book actually comes out December 31st so that's kind of impressive that she published two books within one year in the same series. Like that's amazing. I really admire anyone who can write like that. This second cover actually kind of reminds me of of like Jafar from Aladdin. I don't know if you can see what I'm saying. We also got the cover of The Queen's Resistance by Rebecca Ross, which is the next book after The Queen's Rising. Again, stays in line with the original book, which I love. Haven't read the first book yet either, but I, that is another one that is on my list. Then we also got the cover for A Question of Homes by Brittany Cavallaro. This is another one, stays in line with the rest of the series, but it is a lot brighter. It's like this bright coral color. The other ones are a little bit darker, but it does have the same kind of artwork style. This is the Charlotte Holmes series. There were only supposed to be three of them and then it was announced that we were going to be getting more so that's exciting because there are a lot of like diehard fans of this series. And the fourth one's coming out on March 5th. Then we got the cover for The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the second book in the Devabad trilogy. Definitely saying that wrong but it's after The City of Brass. I personally really like the UK cover a lot better than the US cover. The US cover has this like blue light going on but the UK cover has these gorgeous just emerald doors that have this like gold gilded design to it and I just think it's like stunningly beautiful. And the, this second book is coming out on January 8th. Then we have the cover for Night Music by Jen Marie Thorne. This is a book that takes place over a summer in New York City so I am looking forward to reading it. This one comes out on March 19th. Now back to some other non book cover news. So I'm angry because Freeform canceled Famous in Love and there was this huge cliffhanger at the end of season two and probably by the time this video goes out everyone's like we're over it. This happened months ago but I'm not over it. I really want to know where the story was going to go from there because it got really good and I, it like kills me that we won't get more of it because it's so different from the books too so it's not even like I can read the second book and then like know how it's going to go because that was not gonna go that way. Everything's different. I really hope that it will get saved in some kind of way by a streaming service or something. It's not like the best show, but it really just entertained me and I, I want closure. Crazy Rich Asians is also getting a sequel film, which is very, very exciting. I still have not seen Crazy Rich Asians just yet, but I absolutely love Constance Wu, who is the main character within the movie. She's also on Fresh Off the Boat, which is like such a great comedy show. I think she is just a phenomenal actress and I, I'm really excited that this series is getting a second movie and hopefully it'll get a third movie too because there are three books within the series. It just makes me so happy. Then Megan Whale and Turner announced the title and the release date of her next book, which is shocking for fans of her series, the Queen's Thief series, because she typically has taken a really long time between books to put them out, but this time it's a very short wait. The sixth book is called The Return of the Thief and it's coming out on March 19th. Then we have a poster for The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is coming out on Netflix in late October. I cannot wait. I really loved the comic version of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, although I've been waiting for the second volume for five years now. And I just got an email from Amazon the other day saying it's not coming out until 2080. 
<laughs> which had to have been a mistake, but I, I believe it at this point. Um, I'm super excited. Sabrina has always been my favorite character from within the Archie universe. I loved Sabrina the Teenage Witch when I was younger, and I'm so excited to see this like darker adaptation of the series and the aesthetics of everything is like gorgeous. We also got a trailer for The Crimes of Grindelwald. There have been very mixed opinions on this because we got the shock of seeing Nagini and we don't know how Nagini is going to become Lord Voldemort's snake, but she is played by an Asian woman and we're just kind of wondering how that's gonna be explained um, in the film. So. I am looking forward to seeing more Jacob. I definitely don't love Fantastic Beasts anywhere near as much as I love the Harry Potter series, obviously. I don't think anyone does, but I, I'm obviously going to stick with it. I'm still going to watch it. I'm, I'm curious about young Dumbledore. I like Jude Law, so I'm this, it's interesting to me. Next, HBO ordered a prequel series to Game of Thrones. They finally put the green light on one of them. There were like seven series that were kind of in development, and this is the first one that got the go-ahead. And it's gonna chronicle the world's descent from the Golden Age into its darkest hour. So that sounds kind of cool. No other info yet, but I'll keep you updated. And then Lastly, there are just a couple of New York Comic Con exclusive Funkos that I wanted to mention. The first one being there's actually going to be a George R. R. Martin Funko. So if you really like George R. R. Martin in Game of Thrones, you can actually get a Funko of the author himself. There's also going to be a Funko for an auger from Fantastic Beasts. And this is another one that I really like. I think it's a very cool like bird looking creature and I like all the little green leaves and stuff. I think it's really cute. And then lastly, there's going to be a Professor Quirrell Funko and his hat actually comes off. And if you take the hat off, you will see Voldemort his head on the back, which is really cool. That's like a really inventive new thing that Funko is doing. I've seen a couple where they have like removable pieces and I think it's really fun and just a way to kind of keep their stuff still relevant and up to date because they've just done so much and this is a very good way to keep people interested. And then there's also going to be a sorting hat version of Hermione and that's it. That's all that I'm talking about in this video. So thank you so much if you have stuck with me until the end. I know that this was super long, like way longer than I ever do for news videos, but like I said it was a three month little catch up and I didn't even cover all the things. I swear that these are going to be more frequent, so get ready for more news videos. I know I said that a couple of times, but I like swear that I mean it this time, but I have to go because my throat is killing me. So that's all that I have for this video and I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!